Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson. This lesson is on vitamin D, the immune system, and respiratory infections like SARS-CoV-2 or the virus that causes COVID-19. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about how vitamin D regulates the immune system, and particularly, we're going to talk about how it regulates the immune system against respiratory infections like SARS-CoV-2. So what is vitamin D? So there are actually multiple forms of vitamin D. We're going to talk about calcitriol, the active form of vitamin D. And vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin involved in calcium homeostasis. But it is also known to have roles in immune system modulation. We're going to talk about those roles in the next upcoming slides. And because vitamin D plays a role in modulating the immune system, there has been question as to does it play a role and what role does it play in SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 infections? So SARS-CoV-2, just as a brief introduction, is a beta coronavirus that causes coronavirus disease 2019 or COVID-19. And the reasons for looking at vitamin D in SARS-CoV-2 infections is because vitamin D insufficiency or a deficiency of vitamin D has been associated with increased susceptibility to infections like acute respiratory tract infections. And vitamin D has been shown to decrease risk of respiratory infections and or severity of respiratory infections. We're going to talk about these points more in detail in the next upcoming slides. So vitamin D deficiency in infections. We mentioned this before, vitamin D deficiency is associated with increased susceptibility to a variety of infectious diseases. One of those infections is tuberculosis. In fact, at the advent of research into treatments for tuberculosis, it was found that vitamin D actually reduces morbidity associated with tuberculosis. Another infection that's associated with vitamin D deficiency is influenza. And another one is bacterial vaginosis. There are other infections, but these are a few that I wanted to mention here. What about vitamin D and respiratory infections more specifically. So in this article here, which is entitled Vitamin D Supplementation to Prevent Acute Respiratory Tract Infections, Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Individual Participant Data, which was published in BMJ in 2017, this article, as it mentions here, is a meta-analysis, which means that the authors of this meta-analysis have looked at many, many different other articles and conglomerated the evidence and data into this article. So what this meta-analysis has shown is that vitamin D supplementation is associated with the reduction in acute respiratory tract infections. Here is a table presented from that meta-analysis showing the list of articles they looked at and adjusted odds ratio. So this line here represents an adjusted odds ratio of one. Anything to the right of this line is above one and anything to the left of this line is below one. So anything above this line or above one means that there is a positive association. So that means that there are more respiratory tract infections with vitamin D supplementation. Anything to the left of this line means that there is a negative association. So as vitamin D increases or vitamin D is supplemented, there is a decrease in respiratory tract infections. So as you can see here, a quite a variation. Some of these studies actually show a increase in respiratory tract infections with vitamin D supplementation, but for the most part, most of them show a negative or a decrease in respiratory tract infections with vitamin D supplementation. Looking at the combined adjusted odds ratio, we see that the combined adjusted odds ratio for all of these studies comes to 0 0.80, showing that vitamin D supplementation reduces the incidence of respiratory tract infections. And this data is statistically significant as we see the p-value here is less than 0.05. And additionally, because of the variation in the data from these articles, the authors of the meta-analysis also did a subgroup analysis. So a subgroup analysis is essentially where the authors looked more specifically at certain groups of participants. So what they found was that Vitamin D supplementation has the strongest protective effect in groups with vitamin D deficiency. So groups where their baseline vitamin D levels were less than 25 nanomoles per liter. The authors of this meta-analysis also looked at how dosing plays a role in vitamin D supplementation and acute respiratory tract infections. What they found was that dosing is also an important factor. Daily or weekly dosing of vitamin D was found to be protective, but bolus dosing did not show protective effects. So what is bolus dosing? Bolus dosing is where an individual takes a very, very large amount of vitamin D all at once and doesn't take it consistently over time. So they only take big, large amounts once in a while. So bolus dosing in the context of this article was described as 30,000 units of vitamin D. So very, very large dose of vitamin D. So 
what this means is that taking daily or weekly dosing of vitamin D consistently over long periods of time at appropriate doses, so doses that are recommended, are better at reducing the risk of respiratory infections. So if you haven't taken any dose of vitamin D and you take a very large bolus dose, it doesn't actually show any protective effects. It's important to do it over a consistent period of time with appropriate doses. So now having said all that, how does vitamin D actually protect against respiratory tract infections? So vitamin D is involved in immune system regulation, as we mentioned before, and vitamin D receptors are actually present in many immunological cells. These include B cells and T cells, macrophages, and dendritic cells. And by way of activating their vitamin D receptors, vitamin D can modulate innate and adaptive immune system function. And it does this by upregulating immune system proteins like catholicidins and defensins. These antimicrobial proteins have antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal properties. This article entitled The Vitamin D Antimicrobial Peptide Pathway and Its Role in Protection Against Infection describes some of these mechanisms. So vitamin D, again, upregulates catholicidins and defensins. These are antimicrobial peptides. So the topic of the antimicrobial peptides is extremely complex. I'm only gonna talk briefly about these two groups of antimicrobial peptides. So with regards to the catholicidins, we have catholicidin antimicrobial peptide, or CAMP, and there's a single CAMP gene in humans, HCAP18. It's been shown that RSV, or respiratory syncytial virus, when it comes into contact with respiratory epithelial cells, it activates those respiratory epithelial cells through toll-like receptor 3, or TLR3. This leads to the activation of the vitamin D pathway, leading to the upregulation or induction of CAMP, or catholicidin antimicrobial peptide. With regards to the defensins, the defensins are expressed in leukocytes in epithelial cells, and there's two groups of defensins, alpha and beta defensins. So the defensins have been shown to actually bind to the influenza virus, and they can actually cause aggregation of the influenza virus and reduce the influenza virus's ability to infect cells. And the defensins and catholicidin antimicrobial peptide can also disrupt bacterial membranes as well. So again, this is a very, very brief overview of catholicidins and defensins. And here is a brief summary of their effects. So catholicidins and defensins are not only involved in the mechanisms I mentioned here, but they're involved in chemotraction of various immune cells. As we mentioned before, they disrupt microbial membranes like bacteria. They reduce viral replication and importantly, they reduce production of pro-inflammatory cytokines, which becomes important in COVID-19 infections. So with regards to vitamin D and pro-inflammatory cytokines, vitamin D can actually reduce cytokine storm or cytokine release syndrome, which we know causes an increasing morbidity and mortality in respiratory infections like COVID-19. And the cytokine storm is related to acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, which is a critical component in the mortality of COVID-19. Vitamin D regulates or reduces pro-inflammatory cytokines by reducing T helper cell inflammatory cytokine production. So it reduces the production of tumor necrosis factor alpha and interferon gamma. More evidence is showing that SARS-CoV-2 infections or COVID-19 infections and the severity of those infections is related to or associated with an elevation of the cytokine interleukin-6 or IL-6. This article here, Anti-Inflammatory Effects of Dietary Vitamin D3 in Patients with Multiple Sclerosis, has shown that vitamin D supplementation can modulate levels of interleukins like interleukin-6. It can actually decrease interleukin-6. So this is another mechanism by which vitamin D may have a possible role in reducing the morbidity and mortality of COVID-19. Now that we know that background information, let's look at vitamin D and SARS-CoV-2 more specifically. So we know that incidence in case fatality rates, or CFR, of COVID-19 infections is increased in patients with comorbidities. We've seen that patients with diabetes, hypertension, heart failure, and COPD are at an increased risk of being infected with SARS-CoV-2 and having an increased fatality rate. We've also seen some evidence that 
the incidence in CFR of COVID-19 infections is increased in areas with higher levels of pollution. And we've also seen that the case fatality rate is increased in infections with complications like ARDS. What's very interesting is that vitamin D levels are inversely correlated with many of these factors. So what I mentioned here was talked about in this article entitled Evidence That Vitamin D Supplementation Could Reduce Risk of Influenza and COVID-19 Infections and Deaths, which was published in the journal Nutrients in 2020. And here's a table from that article. And this table is entitled How Vitamin D is Related to the Clinical and Epidemiological Findings for Incidence and Case Fatality Rates. So here are the characteristics, so the comorbidities and some of the complications. And here is the relationship to levels of vitamin D or 25-hydroxy vitamin D. And looking at this table, we can see that many of these complications and comorbidities have an inverse relationship or inverse correlation to vitamin D levels. So some of them include severe cases associated with pneumonia, increased pro-inflammatory cytokines like interleukin-6, increased risk of sepsis, risk of ARDS, heart failure, diabetes, and we can also see it with increasing case fatality rates for certain patients with certain comorbidities as well. And again, most of them are associated with an inverse correlation to vitamin D levels. That means that comorbidities and complications and level of vitamin D go in opposite directions. So what does that mean? So that means that having increased incidence and case fatality rates and having these complications and comorbidities as these go up, your vitamin D levels go down. They go in opposite directions. And what's important here is inverse correlation, correlation. Correlation does not equal causation. That means that we can't say that this causes this or that low vitamin D levels cause the complications or comorbidities. We know that they are associated, but we don't know how they are associated. There could be another factor or many other factors that are tied together with these two factors that are influencing both of them. We do know that they are associated. And so as these go up, vitamin D levels go down and vice versa. As vitamin D levels go up, these go down. So that is important to take away from this as well. So I hope you found this lesson helpful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.